Thank you. Uh, we're back now with um, a uh, lovely woman. She is a psychotherapist, and she's also uh, the author of A Therapist's Insider Guide on Relationships Healing the Past. Please welcome Roxanne Deerhodge to the show. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, you've brought some fans with you. Make some noise if you're here for Roxanne. <laughs> Roxanne, Roxanne. It's that kind of name. It's that kind of name. It's so nice to say it twice. So tell me a little bit um, about your background. I think we have something in common. We discovered that we're both uh, from the Caribbean. We are. Yeah. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. And, All right. Uh, moved here when I was 16 uh, to go to school and uh, haven't left since. I go back to Trinidad often. Go for I'm carnival? Yes, <laughs> for sure. You can't miss carnival. And I'm here with my son, RJ. Um, and my sister and my best friend, Louise. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Yeah. So what, um, what, trend, what happened in your life for you to come to that understanding that, you know what, I want to get into therapy? Hmm. When we get into things, it's because of something of our own personal experience. Well, I think absolutely you get into things because of experiences and... Um, in the Caribbean, I don't know if you recall this, but we didn't talk a lot about feelings. That you know. Yeah, we're told not to chat oh, your business. No, no. Don't share anything. That stays in the house. Don't it tell people your business. <laughs> the Trinidadians do it too. Yeah. Um, so I, th I remember going to school, and you know, I was about eleven. I went to a all girls school, and there was some concerns in my family, and really remembering that there really wasn't a place to go to talk to people, mm -hmm. and. Um, in school, you know, there were counselors, but they really didn't know much. Or they nor didn't did know much? No, no, not much. So I remember thinking, wow, it's, c you know, where do you go? If you can't go to ho at home and talk to people, where do you go? So I think at 11, I start to think, boy, can you imagine if you kind of could talk to people and be able to help them? And I found that, you know, being around girls, it made it easier. Not that anything against the guys. But it, it really showed me that I had some sort of gift to be able to share and help others. Absolutely. So yeah. I started to talk and thought, maybe I can go to school for this. Okay. Well, and, and you know, just um, speaking to what you mentioned before about maybe women being uh, more socialized to open up and the opposite for men, I think they're taught to, you know, have a stiff upper lip and just work it out, walk it off don't share your feelings. Well, absolutely. I think men are, um, they're dealt the wrong hand sometimes because I often think of when, you know, my son is growing and uh, I want him to be able to talk about his feelings. How old is your son? He's 15 and a half. He's, he's tall. He is. Yeah. Not, didn't get that gene from his <laughs> mother. Um, and being able to be uh, an, av an available emotional male, but to get on a hockey rink. Well, he's Canadian because he plays hockey, he doesn't play cricket. Um, <laughs> and to be able to have to switch off and be able to deal with his feelings once he's taken off his hockey gear. So as a mother, um, I had to learn how to uh, teach the things that I teach in my practice to my son, which has been the biggest learning for me as a mom, but also as a psychotherapist. Okay, fantastic. So who are the people who come to you looking for help? Well, you know, I wish I could say it's one particular person. Uh, my practice um, spans, uh, I deal with kids all the way up to people in their 60s or even 70s. But I would say it's mostly people that are wanting, you know, you talked about peace, wanting peace this year. And I think it's peace of mind, yes. happiness. Um, people, we all want the same thing. We want connection. We want to feel good. We want to live within our values. But sometimes, unfortunately, what happens is we live a life and maybe we're shifting, but our relationships don't shift with us. Okay. But we drag people along anyway. And I, you know, I can speak to my situation. Um, I was married for 25 years, and that was the case. And um, I made a shift, and hence came the birth of the book. Mm -hmm. So I always thought, you know, what could I teach people? I started in this field when I was 21. Unfortunately, I can't say that I did anything else other than being a psychotherapist. And then I thought, you know, when you listen to people out in places like this or Starbucks or Tim Hortons, what are we talking about? Mm -hmm. We all want better relationships. Yeah. And we want to enhance them in, in whatever way they can. So I decided I'm going to write about my life experience where I analyze my entire life like I do any patient 
in my book, and my readers can work through all relationships uh, by going through the book. Okay, and there are different forms of relationships. And um, do you believe when people tell you, well, I don't need to be with anybody? I've actually spoken to people who said, you know, like, I, I like to just want, I just want to be on an island. I don't want to mm -hmm. deal with anybody. But do you think that's, that's natural or normal? It's, it's based out of pain, unfortunately. Okay. I think you, what I find is a lot of people don't know how to be on their own. So when any of us as human beings have been through pain and we haven't resolved it, the instinct is to, to uh, retract. Um, but you can only do that for a short period of time because mm -hmm. as human beings, uh, we come into this world in connection, and we may need times where we separate and maybe learn ways to how to heal right. our wounds, mm -hmm. but eventually we all need uh, connection, and that's the one biggest gift that I think as a psychotherapist I've been able to do is to offer connection to people that maybe have never really felt connected to anyone else in their lives. Okay, excellent. So let's talk about this amazing book. When uh, was it released? It was released uh, two years ago. And it's been uh, fantastic ever since. Um, I've been speaking a lot. Like the other two ladies, I've been uh, on a fair amount of uh, radio and TV. Um, I pretty much have a consulting business full time and uh, see people um, and also coach and uh, have different programs where people can work with me one-to-one. -one. Okay. So the, um, the book kind of breaks down in chapters about how the process of healing can happen. And... I'll give you an example. When um, a, a dear friend of mine passed away uh, from cancer at, a, at an, you know, in her 30s, it was it was devastating for myself and and for you know the the, the friends in our circle, and um, I I just remember just crying spontaneously, just like excuse me, and I'll just go in a corner and ball and come back and okay back to normal. But it took a while. I would say maybe a year and a half before I felt you know quote unquote normal, um, but the grieving and the healing happens when it's supposed to happen, and there's no time stamp on when that should be. It could be two minutes or it could be two years. Is that, is that correct? Absolutely, and I think um, grieving can take sometimes three to five years, depending on the connection with the individual in your life. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes what happens in societies, people either feel and they don't function, or they function and they don't feel. Okay. So what becomes really, really important is to really go with the natural flow of grief um, recently, unfortunately, we uh, in my family went through a, a devastating loss not too long ago, four months ago, and Sorry I can tell that. and I can tell you that it has brought us to a different level um, where, you know, it it forces you to really sit and reflect on really what's important in life, and um, and how short life is really absolutely, yeah. and yeah. Uh, to really you know embrace every moment and going back to that concept of we all want peace of mind, you know. This concept of you know going after money or things like that, I think a lot of times that's what pro society promotes. But it's really about looking beneath that and saying, what am I going to gain? Um, should I get to a certain space? And oftentimes uh, there is a technique that I use with my clients, and I and uh, any therapist that's out there that's listening to me knows it. It's called the miracle question. And we often post to people, and we say, if you went to bed tonight and you got up tomorrow morning and you were to open your eyes. And you don't know it, but a miracle's happened. But you look around your life and you say, wow, this is perfect. What would be going on? And that oftentimes reflects and connects people at a deep, profound level to what they value and believe. And because we can oftentimes tuck it away and say, oh, that's not important or this isn't important. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll pick this up later. Right. But already at the end of the day, when you sit and you, um, you know, in silence, which is often something that uh, we don't do We're often challenged enough. by silence. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, then you really can get to that profound level about who and, who and what am I and what, what do I value. Yeah, so it, it may be very difficult for some people to take stock of where they are, or what they've become. Um, so that might be the hard part and they, they, they tune it out by being distracted. But once you can meditate, uh, that's where the change can happen. Would you Abs agree? Absolutely. And, you know, we talk about meditation as being something kind of going up to the Himalayas and, you know, spending yeah. a couple <laughs> months. But what's, what we know in the field is it's about mindfulness. We have five senses. Mm -hmm. And how often do we really sit and when you're having your cup of coffee, really mm -hmm. sit and taste it or smell it or, you know, feel the texture of the cup you know, under your hands. Yeah, it, it can be very, very simple things, but in our harriedness of life, unfortunately, uh, 
we go uh, faster and we have so much technology, but actually we go in the polar opposite of what um, staying connected is about. Okay, great. Um, I just wanted to ask you, where can people find the book? The book's on Amazon, and you can order also order it on my website at roxanderhodge.com. Awesome. All right. Roxanne, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Roxanne Derhodge, everybody. Thank you. Thanks so much. And before you go, do you want to tell us your little surprise? Yes. So um, what I'm going to do is give away one of my books, and um, I'm going to allow Nikki to pick the person or just do a random draw for someone that would like to get a copy of my book. And I, if they're here, or I can um, autograph it personally, um, or Nikki can get it to someone. Okay, so what we're going to do is, and uh, this is a little trivia for you, so that shows that you've been listening throughout the <laughs> interview. Can you give us a question based on what you just told us? Hmm. First person answer gets the book. Addy, do you want to <laughs> hold on to the book? What's a simple thing I can ask? Um, what island am I from? Where is she from? <laughs> Trinidad? Okay, congratulations. <laughs> Natalie Lewin. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Thanks Roxanne. Thanks so much. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank Always a pleasure. Thank you. We'll be back. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Uh, we've got um, another... Uh, an incredible woman. She does uh, a great deal in the community. She is the second vice president of the Ontario Black History Society. Please welcome Paulette Kelly to the show. <laughs> you always wear the most amazing necklaces. That looks gorgeous. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you. Good, good. Awesome. So tell me, um, what is the Ontario Black History Society? Uh, it's an organization that's... Uh, formed to for the preservation of black history, okay? As we talk about black history uh, in the past as well as in the future, we want to uh, identify people that are making a contribution to the community as well. Okay, awesome. And, and we're just days away from February, which is Black History Month. Yes, it is. Okay, and um, something is happening on Sunday, uh, January 29th. Can you tell us about what that is? Yes, we're having our annual brunch and it's always the last Sunday, or most of the time, majority of the years, the last Sunday in January. And we do that in January because in February we're so busy with so many other commitments with Black History Month. Absolutely. So that's going to be where? It's going to be downtown at the uh, convention center on, uh, on uh, Front Street. Okay. Toronto and Convention Center. Awesome. And that's from noon to about 4? Noon to about 4. Uh, we usually have vendors there, so people might want to come early and uh, uh, visit the vendors as well, do a little bit of shopping. Awesome. And I think we're having a silent auction as well. Okay. And there's always great entertainment there. Always. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, Archie Aline, um, the late, great Archie Aline, used to perform here, right here, at the okay. Paint Box, uh, yes. with his EOJ, yes. uh, Ensemble of uh, Jazz yes. Group. And they'll be performing. So his youth band is going to be performing with a vocalist as well. Okay, amazing. So I think we've got some tickets here too. Um, if anyone would like to purchase a ticket and be part of this, this is one of the biggest fundraising events. Yes, it is. Uh, for all the endeavors we have throughout the year. Uh, so Black History is, is right through the year, not just one month. Uh, and Dorothy Abbott is here. She's our treasurer. Uh, and she has tickets here for... $100 if anyone wants to purchase them, and the money goes back to all these great fundraising efforts. But, you know, when did you get involved as a, um, as a member of the OBHS, and, and what was your reason for joining? Well, I got involved because I'm actually African American, and I wanted something that I could identify with. And I felt by joining the Ontario Black History Society, I would have people that looked at things uh, in the same uh, uh, areas and ways that I would, and uh, it also helped me to be more at home, okay. feel more at home in, a, in, a, in another country. Okay, where are you from? In the I'm States? actually from Connecticut. Connecticut, okay. So this was a way to connect back with the community yeah. and, and th it's volunteer driven, right? The Ontario yes, Black History Society. Yes, it is, very, so very much so. So um, what would you say about uh, the type of people that uh, have come on board and, and, and who are we trying to kind of attract? to be well, a part of this? Well, I think uh, a couple things I'd like to say is that we are involved with education and that we want to get the word out about the history of black people in Canada, both past and present, but we also like to out reach out to young people 
because I think it's very important that young people learn about our history and know the many things and many accomplishments that have been made. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we are always looking for volunteers. It's a very interesting uh, organization to get involved with. We do do research. We do uh, put on different types of programs. So uh, if anybody has free time, uh, please uh, think of us. Yeah, and we're also looking for donations throughout the year. And yeah. Yes, and donations help us out a lot because there's a lot of programs we want to do. We can't do them all. But by having those donations, we're able to do a little bit more. Absolutely. And where can people locate us? Can you give us the website? Uh, well, what I would suggest, the easiest way is to Google Ontario Black History Society, and everything comes up. Our phone numbers, everything comes up, our address as well. Awesome. All right. Paulette, thank you so much for dropping by and sharing the good news of the, um, the kickoff brunch yes. on uh, January 29th. That's Sunday at the Metro Convention Center from noon to 4. And uh, we have tickets here for sale, $100, if you'd like to uh, put that towards a fantastic three-course meal. Um, we've got a number of the diplomatic corps who are going to be there. Mayor Tory is going to be there, and fantastic entertainment and a marketplace. Yeah, and I just wanted to mention one thing. Uh, last year we sold out and we exceeded our numbers, and this year as well. So we only have four tickets left. We have exceeded probably about about 200 people more. So if you're interested, we've saved four tickets just in case somebody <laughs> wanted to buy them. Would like, like to come? Yes, we're almost sold out at 700. Yes. Yes. Which is unprecedented. So Yes, it's been growing. It's amazing. The hard work of the board of directors, Paulette Kelly, Dorothy Abbott, and the um, other uh, amazing um, staff, uh, Michelle Halsall, uh, Pam Houston, and our um, other beloved board of directors. Um, their names escape me right now, but we're all working hard There's together. There's quite a number of directors. On, on okay. On the awesome. Board. Paulette, thanks again, okay. and uh, we'll see you Sunday. Hopefully we can uh, all get together, and we'll make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back.